Well, hello everybody, this is Michael Butterman, music director of the Shreveport Symphony Orchestra. Excited to be working with our friend Francisco Foyana on a uh, program uh, with the Shreveport Symphony, the first of the new year, and in fact, the first uh, uh, concert that we are uh, going to be live streaming. Uh, so we're very excited about that. We won't have a live audience, but uh, we will have folks uh, tuning in in real time to listen to this fantastic uh, program that includes uh, two works for solo violin and it's mostly string orchestra, <laughs> yes. let's say. Uh, the um, Lark Ascending by Ray Fun Williams and uh, Four Seasons Recomposed mm -hmm. by Vivaldi slash Max Richter. Uh, that's a piece that you've um, uh, recorded before, but I think it's the first time for you with the, with the Lark, isn't it? Yes, so it's actually pretty, pretty exciting. It's one of those, you were talking earlier, that it feels a bit like a hole in my repertoire that for whatever reason, uh, I never got to play it. You know, I played like Tzigan and Poem and, you know, some of these big kind of concertante type pieces, right. but never the Lark. And, and it's been so fun to kind of explore those, the, the colors and the freedom that, that he gives you. I mean, uh, of course, the title itself, right? The Lark Ascending kind of gives you a good hint of how the piece is going to go <laughs> and the kind of atmosphere that uh, Van Williams is looking for. Right. But uh, there just, it starts and ends kind of with this beautiful cadenzas that, you know, you're by yourself and you're really just floating around and exploring. So I am, I'm excited about that. Very, very free and kind of Fantasia-like. It feels, uh, uh, when, you, when you say the word cadenza, a lot of people think about flashy pyrotechnics yeah. and so on. Uh, it's, it's more um, uh, sort of rhapsodic and um, just really free. I'm sure it's different every single time. Yeah, it is. And, it. And, and it's interesting, you know, because most cadenzas have a lot of fast notes and a lot of, you know, kind of up and down kind of flashy things. but. Yeah you don't get to sing by yourself that much, kind of like a, a single melody. It's almost like the orchestra is missing. <laughs> right. So, uh, so that's, that's pretty rare, that's pretty unique that, uh, that Vaughn Williams kind of actually explores that kind of sound when I'm just singing by myself at a very, very high pitch. And then eventually the kind of goes back down and then the orchestra, then we're playing it again the main melody, but with the orchestra. Right, so this is a work that uh, is uh, inspired by a, a work of poetry, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. And uh, I guess you could say the Vivaldi Four Seasons is as well. There's poetry that goes with the original version that That's he true. had of uh, the, the Four Seasons. But the, the uh, Von Williams in particular uh, refers to, uh, it just it paints this image of this lark, which uh, kind of circles and then and and then it, it uh, begins to sort of sing this uh, sort of unbroken chain of mm -hmm. of um, a beautiful uh, br song essentially mm -hmm. and uh, so there are moments that feel very um, kind of folk like uh, sort yeah. of in the middle yes uh, and uh, probably modal harmonies I guess would be a way to, mm -hmm. to describe it cause what we associate with a lot of von Williams music but as you said the beginning and the end are just so kind of um, uh, well, just t they really transport you to another, um, <laughs> another place, another, <laughs> another frame of mind, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy the like, yeah, this like this contrast between those yeah, opening solos, but then that a lot of the time I'm also accompanying the orchestra and kind of, I would say, twirling around <laughs> like a little bird yeah. and using a lot of trills and turns while the orchestra is having this beautiful kind of lush melody and lush sound behind me. Right, yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Uh, th this, this business of, of uh, little trills and, and <laughs> chirps almost yes, that, that exactly. kind of get thrown in there. We hear that in moments of the Vivaldi as well. Yes. In fact, the, the first movement of Spring mm -hmm. that we have in the Richter version uh, really concentrates on a, just a very short episode in the original that's Vivaldi true. where uh, there's a lot of chip, chip, Yeah, chip. I mean, it's just like starting on a... It's just me, and then one A, which is the concert master, right. joins me. And then basically the, the whole first movement just has like four or five little elements. I mean, the... And then... And then, and then the little chirp at top. Exactly. And that's about it. That's literally it. And then everybody, all the violins are doing it at different times, so it creates this texture. That's, I mean, I think it's incredible. And then underneath, you have you have the, the cellos and you know the lower strings just kind of having this much thicker, it's almost drone-like. Well, it's drone-like, yeah. It's like it. a pedal tone yeah. thing. It changes very, yes. very slowly. Very slowly, yes. Yeah. And it's... it goes from like, you know, as I said, I'm literally starting it. 
that quiet by myself, and then right. it ends in like triple forte. Right. <laughs> so it's a well, huge crescendo all the way throughout. Right. In fact, several of the movements of uh, this uh, piece end with a kind of a, a, a whoosh, a crescendo that doesn't, yeah. it certainly doesn't come to a, no. a you know, a kind of just concluded, concluded yeah. including kids. Yeah. It just kind of. So it will be nice to do it in the, in the space that we're doing it, actually. Yes, so we are performing this at First Baptist Church uh, for a number of reasons, uh, not the least of which is that they have these wonderful uh, cameras there that we're going to be able to use to uh, create the, uh, the video of the live stream. And also uh, uh, the, the fact that the, that the uh, acoustic there is so warm and uh, alive and uh, very flattering, I think, especially to a string orchestra sound, I think like you said, some of this is just going to kind of ring beautifully yeah. uh, in, in that space. I'm looking forward to that. So that first movement of the Vivaldi mm -hmm. is one approach that Richter takes in the Four Seasons, which is to say he takes maybe just a little kernel of an idea and, yep. and, right. and, and, and b creates really a whole new work mm -hmm. uh, in, in that regard. Other times, uh, he very much, uh, he, he, he sticks very closely to the Vivaldi yes. t er text, I guess you would say. <laughs> but sometimes it feels like he leaves out uh, a, a beat every yeah, now and Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the kind of the famous, the famous part. Uh, if you have listened, and this has been in soundtracks now, so if anybody has listened to Netflix or seen Netflix uh, Chef Stable, the very opening of the show, uh, I mean, I've had friends we didn't even know the piece, uh, the Richter yeah. version that were like, this is very confusing because it's <laughs> which one, you know two. it's missing one beat. I mean, usually, <laughs> yeah. So right. uh, yeah, so that seven eight thing with the seven eight notes, uh, it, it really I would say confuses people. Uh, but at the same time, that's what he uses to give this kind of intense. Almost like added intensity to the rhythm. It kind of pro it, it, propels it. it yeah, that's a good word to use. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, yeah. two. Exactly yeah. that. So let me ask you then: When you are playing something like this that you played so many times in the original yeah. version, and then all of a sudden, wait, there's just one little difference here. Is that uh, is that in a way harder than learning a brand new piece? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's. I think it's it's interesting now these days as I've you know, since I recorded it, I have been playing it quite a bit. So I almost have the opposite effect. When mm. it's when I play the original. I, I kind of have to get out of that, the, the Richter sound world and the Richter kind of uh, uniqueness of it and the ac accents in different places and things like that and rely on more of, you know, just the, the more Baroque approach that, right. that I have with the Vivaldi. So, yeah. so it's actually almost the opposite now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this I, has I, become more the norm for me. <laughs> right, right, right. You're playing this uh, so much that this is now, now the Vivaldi sounds like, what's the matter with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah I understand. That. So, yeah. and yet another approach is one uh, that we hear, I think it's the second movement of winter, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. where the orchestra is 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 just playing these. Uh, that's what just harmonics. I the think harmonics, we're playing. Yep. So, and, and then you play the essentially what is the solo. I, I love that movement. Yeah. Yeah. So I because I'm just you know it's literally exactly the, the the solo from the from the second movement of winter right. in Vivaldi, but Richter marks it. I'll, I'll leave it to him. Right. So, you know, instead of the, like actually the one with the, in the Vivaldi bird, it has all the pitches underneath, pizzicati, so it actually yeah. becomes, it's very square. Right. Yeah. And, pum, 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 and you know, like almost like there are the drops of rain, I think that's what yeah, it's yeah, supposed yeah. to represent. And in this case, it's just this, you know, long harmonic thing, and you can just, you know, be as free as you want. It's almost like, it really feels like a dream. Right. And then I... You know, I won't give it away too much, but uh, <laughs> the, then the kind of the second half, then I go a little bit crazy with the ornamentation and be able to, yeah, kind of just explore the... So I mean, it's really, well, a lot of Baroque music uh, has the uh, that kind of flexibility to add ornamentation sure, as the course. performer wants. But this particular version kind of gives you maybe an extra bit of license yes. to do that. Yeah. And of course, it makes the rhythm, uh, well, the rhythm is, 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 is entirely free, I yeah. guess. I yeah, say. So basically, I mean, I, yeah, I, I do things that, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes you know, I take one beat and it takes four beats and then I kind of rush through a whole bar, so. Right. Yeah. So the, I mean, the, another, another observation one could make about this piece is that uh, you sort of hinted at it already, which is that it, sometimes we have a piece 
a movement like that, where the orchestra is just kind of laying down a very, uh, uh, just a cushion of sound, I guess you'd say, and it's all you. Other times, like the first movement of uh, Spring, for example, mm -hmm. you're you're not really the soloist exactly. You're sort of not one of the gang. And I love that. I mean, that's that's the cool because the thing is with a lot of these Baroque concertos, all you know, the back like the, the real Baroque concertos, they are they are very much like chamber music. I mean, you think about like the Concerto Grosso, so you think like a Brandenburg's, yeah, there's some solo parts where, you know, kind of the violin or the flute or whatever instrument kind of goes off. But a lot of the time it's just all together. And uh, in this specific piece, there are movements that the whole thing is very much just a piece of chamber music. Each of the instruments are playing a separate part, uh, each of the violins, uh, which then creates Richter kind of, you know, uses instead of having two parts, having seven parts and the solo part to create this textures where I'm just one of, you know, one of the eight. And, you know, my part is not any more important than the rest. Exactly. Yeah, that's a very good point. This is, uh, in that respect, very much um, a, a um, the, not remnant, but anyway, it is, it is like the, the that Baroque approach yeah. where you're kind of, you're going, moving in and out of yes. the texture as a, as a prominent uh, voice. Well, it's something we're excited to share with um, uh, with our musicians and certainly to share with our audience. I think, you know, this piece feels to me like it is made for the current moment because, <laughs> you know, we, we yeah. are, uh, well, here we are having an interview with Masto, of yes. course, and we are going to do a concert without an audience. Yes. Um, it, we are ad all adapting and, and yep. reinventing right. a little bit. And so the idea of taking a piece of music that has been as, as iconic as this Vivaldi has been for hundreds of years, and to kind of readapt that as Max Richter. He, of course, he wrote this. When did he write this, by the way? Well, he wrote this. Uh, what's I was uh, I want to say about two thousand ten or so. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, so eighteen. Yeah, ten or eleven. Well, we'll like call that. it. It's 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 a relatively recent work. Definitely. Certainly not. But to be clear, not written during the pandemic. No, 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 no. Right. But, but a piece that. Uh, feels like it, it it has reinvented this piece or at least reimagined it I yes. guess you would say just the way that it has we're having to reimagine how we do so many things exactly right so uh, it's it's uh, again a, just a, a thrill to to have you back especially back in person I know well, in, thank you uh, so much you know it's it's really a pleasure and you know every time you come back to a place where you have like really good memories I mean the Mozart was still fun yeah. and last time that we did it and uh, of course, things are quite different, but still, the, the familiarity of even coming to a place like this, and uh, uh, and then I don't know, just uh, it's really enjoyable to to kind of re reminiscent of you know pre-pandemic times, and then looking forward to the future when we can do you know a concert in front of the street for the audience, right. and you know this is I would say somewhere in between now. So yeah, we're... exactly right. <laughs> well, the, the important thing is that we're keeping the music playing. Yes, and, uh, please keeping it in people's lives, which I think we need more than ever yeah. right and, now. You know, for us, uh, you know, me and Michael were talking about this, it's, it's so important to, to kind of, uh, you know, to, to perform and to really share our music. And, you know, we're not, like, to be away the, the way we've been, it's been, it's, it's, it's very strange and it's, you know, emotionally very, very tough. So we're lucky to be healthy, but uh, at the same time, uh, this is extra special to be able to perform live together. And I hope that that comes through in the yes. camera, that people from, from, from home really kind of see that extra excitement or energy or any of that. So well, I, you know, I'm sure we'll definitely bring it. I'm, sh I'm sure. I, it, it came through even just last night <laughs> since it was the first time we'd been together as an orchestra for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to have you there this, e uh, this evening for rehearsal. And, exactly. uh, and then, of course, when we, when we eventually uh, perform this, uh, even, even absent the live audience, it's just going to feel... Um, you know, uh, like a like a homecoming yes, in, in yes, some yes. respects. I'm impressed. Also, you are headed from here to uh, to Spain. To yes? Spain, yeah. yeah. It just kind of happened that this past so since last week and then this week and next week, somehow I have concerts, which is so rare. Right. <laughs> I mean, after you know, most of uh, most of the seasons have been canceled, postponed, and things like that. So yeah, I'm actually on Sunday if my test, you know, my PCR test comes in on time. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I'm flying to Spain and I'm playing Mozart G major while I can share that there. And same thing, it's no audience, uh, so you know, similar setup. Uh, you can watch it from anywhere. So, and it's actually, so, you know, hopefully you guys can tune into that Thursday night. And, um, and then even the conductor, the English conductor that was supposed to come, he's not allowed to leave the country. So, oh. uh, so we're gonna do it with, with the music director who's, who's great and, you know, It'll be fun. So. Fantastic. Well, 
again, we're looking so forward to, Thank you, Michael. Thank you to for the concert. Me. Thank you for being with us, and uh, yes. we'll, we'll see you at the downbeat. Exactly.